Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. And welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea. And this weekly podcast focuses on discussing practical tips and techniques that you can use in life to find your inner peace and happiness. If you have any suggestions for topics, let me know through my social media, this site, or email me. My contact information is found at my website, lifesjourneyblog.com. This episode is titled, Learning to Live Peacefully Through a Child's Eye. If we observe how children find their peace and happiness, imitating them will give us adults the same result. Have you ever thought to yourself, I'm on a round object which is spinning and flying through space? A few evenings ago, as I was sitting outside and reflecting on nature and life, I noticed the movement of the stars and the constellations over the hours that I was outside. And then a thought hit me. We're moving. I was sitting in the same spot in my yard, and I know that stars don't move, yet they seemingly were moving. The constellations weren't in the same spot they were when I first sat down as they were a few hours later. Now, of course, I know intellectually that the stars aren't moving. And although I've never really reflected on the implication that if the stars aren't moving, yet they appear to be moving, that it must be me who is moving. Even though I'm sitting in the same spot. So my thought was, I'm on a round object which is spinning and flying through space. So I decided to look this up. And according to my research, the Earth is spinning at the equator at a speed of roughly 1,000 miles per hour, while at the same time that we're spinning at that speed, we are also moving forward at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour. At all times, no matter what we're doing, the ground below us is spinning and moving forward at a very rapid speed. We're on a giant ball, which is spinning and moving through space. When was the last time you thought about that? As I was contemplating that fact, that I'm riding upon a giant moving ball, my mind wandered to the old teacups amusement ride. As a kid, I used to love that ride. As the cups would move along the track, you could independently spin your cup as fast as you wanted. Now, as an adult, spinning in that way is not so much fun for me. Not that the ride scares me in any way, but my body no longer handles the fast spinning motion. So as I'm contemplating the celestial bodies and the movement of the earth, I realize that not unlike an amusement ride, our ride through life is quite similar. A child at at an amusement park tends to enjoy most of the rides. The scarier the ride, the better. The more the ride makes your stomach turn, the better. The faster, the better. Yet as we age, those experiences no longer excite us. We tend to avoid areas in life which seem to be scary and stomach-turning too fast. Rather, as adults, we tend to look for experiences which are predictable, safe, and slow. What happens to us as we age that causes this change in our attitude? Let's take a moment 
to think about some of the endearing qualities that we find in children. Generally, children tend to be curious, adventurous, risk takers, living in the moment, playing, napping, creative, asking questions when they don't know. Now let's take a moment to recall that all of us once had these qualities. Some of us in in adulthood still have these qualities. But generally speaking, many of us lost these qualities as we age. As I reflect on myself, I realize that I lost these qualities as I came to understand that adult society in general frowns upon these childlike qualities. Like it or not, if I wanted to be accepted as an adult, I had to act like an adult, or at least in the way society presented adulthood. Children are usually happy and free because they don't yet understand societal conventions. So they tend to live their life in the present moment. I'm not at all implying that we need to give up societal conventions and so do whatever we want, as that could lead to chaos. Or maybe to a peaceful planet. I don't know. What I am suggesting is that we remember what made us happy and peaceful as a child. And now as an adult, to find a way to bring back that feeling. So, let's reflect on the list that I just mentioned about the qualities of a child. But reflect on them from the eyes of an adult. So, the first one that I mentioned about the qualities of a child is that they are curious. Can we take the time to slow down and notice the world? Look at your world from a new perspective, similar to my reflection that we're living on a spinning moving ball. What does your curiosity say about you? What can you learn from your curiosity? Children are adventurous. When was the last time you took a risk? What stops you from taking a risk? Now, I'm not advising you to do anything dangerous, but try something outside of your comfort zone or try something completely different from what you typically would do. Afterward, reflect on what you learn from the experience. Children are risk takers. Similar to what I just mentioned, I'm not suggesting you try anything dangerous or damaging, but when was the last time you acted without thinking it through or planning it through? What about being spontaneous? Maybe just taking a day trip or surprising someone with a visit. Children tend to live in the moment. Honestly, it's been my experience with children that I learned about peace and living in the moment. I spent a number of years as a chaplain at a children's hospital, and it seemed that regardless of the outcome from the child's condition, they chose to live in the moment instead of dwelling on the future. Even the children with illnesses who were dying. And the children knew what that meant. They would say to me that dying will happen later and invite me to play with them at the moment. It was really myself and the families who dwelt on future thoughts of losing that child, all the while missing the opportunity in the present to enjoy time with the child. Play. What is the purpose of playtime? Well, it's to have fun, to relax, to be creative, to learn skills, to socialize. Where can we find opportunities which will result in those qualities being realized? 
Nap, one of my favorites. Countries such as Mexico and Costa Rica, Ecuador, Spain, Italy, Greece, the Philippines, they all take siestas, naps in the afternoon. Maybe we need to find their wisdom and do likewise. If you aren't able to take a nap, can you find 10 minutes to close your eyes? Or 10 minutes to walk around your office or your building, wherever you are? Just 10 minutes away from the stress and busyness of the day will refresh you mentally and emotionally. Children tend to be creative. In his TED Talk, Sir Ken Robinson shared a story about a young child who was coloring. The teacher asked the child what she was drawing. The child replied, a picture of God. The teacher said, but no one knows what God looks like. The child replied, they will in a minute. Children ask questions when they don't know. Many years ago, when I uh, started my first teaching experience in a high school, as we could say a few decades ago, I was given this advice. If you don't know the answer to one of the student's questions, make it up. They won't know the difference and you won't look stupid. Even as a novice teacher in my early 20s, I understood how wrong that piece of advice was. How is it that when we reach adulthood, we are expected to suddenly know the answer to all questions about everything. Yet, in the workplace, how often have many of us made up an answer so as not to look stupid amongst our colleagues? I have. But doing so tends to cause us stress. Yet, a child who asks when they don't know They don't feel the stress because they're being honest and they're not knowing. So I challenge all of you to join me tonight in watching the stars. As you do, reflect upon your ride in life and the ride on our ball through space. Do we fear this ride and avoid it? Are we willing to raise up our hands and scream or grab the person next to us? Can we simply let ourselves enjoy the ride? I would like to hear from all of you about your experiences and thoughts on this topic. Please leave a comment on this site or go to my website where you can access all of my social media links. I hope you found this episode helpful, and if so, please spread the word by sharing with and telling your friends about this podcast. I encourage you to rate this podcast on iTunes or whatever service you're using, as your ratings help to make this podcast more visible to others. I wish to thank you for listening and for spreading the word, and I hope all of you have a very mindful day. For listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.